안녕하세요. 저 이번 행사는 뭐다 아시겠지만 어, 에프라고 하는 중국에서 이제 새롭게 나온 스마트 컨트랙트 플랫폼 블록체인 발표하는 순서인데요. 어, 이제 저희랑 이제 좋은 파트너십을 가지고서 함께 많은 일을 하고 있는 중국의 어, 이제 최대 크립토 커런시 투자하는 어, 펀드인 FBG에서 사실 이 에프라는 프로젝트를 메이저 베킹을 하고 있고요. 마침 이 행사에 이제 FBG에 있는 파트너들이 이제 많이 찾아와서 어, 좀 소개를 하는 자리를 살짝 먼저 가지려고 합니다. 그래서 이제 FBG에서 대표를 맡고 있는 빈센트를 잠시 무대로 불러서 FBG에 대한 소개를 좀 들어보는 세션을 가지도록 하겠습니다. Hi, Vincent. Uh, this is Vincent from Epic uh, Capital, and uh, I'm the fund partner. And this is my partner, uh, Don Bo. And Epic Capital is a digital currency, uh, sorry, digital currency crypto fund. And uh, and uh, we have uh, we have already uh, invested in uh, we began our business from uh, 2016 uh, in US ICO. Uh, but go back to the, the our background of the trading around uh, more than three years. And uh, right now we have already invested in uh, uh, around 17 projects uh, around the world, and including the we are the only backer of a decentralized land, and also the the, the uh, and also we invested uh, the, the, the the has the okay. members that, uh, talked about the uh, table coin method and also another a uh, lot of project and uh, we are also the one of the biggest uh, traders in, in this group space uh, okay maybe maybe uh, my partner uh, what can give us give us some more tips uh, hi uh, thanks Simon it's really you know uh, honor to be here. Uh, and thanks for you know partner hashed. We you know our strong strongest partner here in South Korea. Um, so uh, we are a crypto fund. We started uh, uh, Bitcoin trading in 2015, um, and we started to invest ICOs in uh, 2016. So the first project we invest was Neo, and till now we have invested more than 70 projects. So uh, we have uh, we we have a, a focus in on the um, uh, fundamentals of the blockchains. So we invested in new blockchains uh, like Elf and Definity, and we also invested in um, decentralized uh, decentralized exchanges like uh, Kyber, Zero X, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and also we uh, we invested. We are you know. Um, uh, we 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 invested in uh, the stablecoin uh, MakerDAO. We, <clears throat> so um, you know, for us, we we are also you know we it's 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 our honor to be here. You know, to be all of you here. So um, to meet all the developers and all the uh, founders here. So uh, if you guys have any interesting idea or good project, you know, yes, we can talk about it later. Yeah. So. Uh, and, uh, and I think Korean market is just like China. And I think in China right now, around 10 million US, 10 million crypto users right now. And uh, also, I heard uh, 5 million users in Korea now, right now. And uh, uh, in the near future, the next one year. Uh, this year, this year, and I think there will be more project come from Korea and from China. From the Korean market cap, we can see a, a lot of projects come from China. Of course, Korea have a better performance than uh, others around the world. So this is also the reason why we. We here we are here and we're trying to uh, 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 trying to be here to uh, to sponsor to sponsor some uh, new staffs in, in Korea and learn from your community. And uh, we already have a strong a strong position in China market and also in the US the US market. We try to be uh, a, a player in the Korean market. Learn from also learn from Cash. Okay, thank you.
Okay, um, so good evening, everyone. I think it's quite challenging that you guys are staying here for three hours. That's amazing. Yeah? <laughs> I have never sat in the same classroom for three hours. So I think you guys worth you know, a round of applause for yourself. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so um, very nice to be here. My name is Zhu Ling. I'm a co-founder of ELF, which is the world's first a decentralized cloud computing platform. Here, together with me, I also have my co-founder, Hao Bo, and yeah, he's sitting right over there. He's a great Chinese-speaking presenter, but unfortunately in English, not so much. Uh, Korean, even worse, right? Um, yeah, so I'll be the main presenter today, and after that, we're you know, more than welcome for any questions you guys have. Okay, so this is our first time actually to introduce ELF to this market. Although Hashed is one of the investors for us, but we think, you know, officially we would like to pay a visit for this important market to meet the people here so that, you know, we can explain what exactly what we're doing and what ELF stands for. Okay, so before I get into that, just a quick story about the name ELF. You may wonder, okay, so what does that mean? Why A and E, you know, and you sometimes it gets together, so what exactly does it mean, right? So there was a short story about it. So at the very beginning, our project is called GRID, G-R-I-D, yeah, because that resonates with the overall structure that we represent, which is a multi-layer, uh, multi-chain structure. So it looks like a grid. But along the way that, you know, so because we took some time to prepare for this project, so another project came out, which is called Grid Plus. And it has been, um, it was already you know, uh, in the place for some time. That's why we thought, okay, we don't want to be too similar you know, to something else. Um, that's why we decided to change the name. And as the co-founders, I am a, I am a StarCraft player. Is there any StarCraft player here? No? Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, but Haobo is a uh, Warcraft player. Yeah, so we're talking, okay, so how can we get the name, right? So we end up with something that called Elf, which we take the inspiration from, you know, one of the races from uh, Warcraft. So the, the little elves. Uh, yeah, that's how the name gets, right? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so before I get into this, um, so I think just now, uh, FBG has already explained, you know, and also hashed. All of them, uh, just like us, has been in this field for some time. So we have seen, you know, big changes since 2016. Yeah, before that, there was like color coin and other stuff. But starting from 2016, that's where we start to see, you know, more interesting stuff about blockchain. You know, where people start to think about, besides just being a P2P payment system, what else can blockchain do? I think Bitcoin has done a great job showing that you know, a trustless P2P payment system really works. But Ethereum is the first one that brings in a generic computing platform that is decentralized and also can host different dApps on top of that. So that unleashes much more potential of what can be decentralized and how to transform business models in that direction, right? That's why we see also, you know, in terms of the market cap, we see a very nice, you know, curve going up, especially I think last year into September, that was how confident the market is. And there are so many great ideas, you know, floating around the market, right? But all of a sudden, you still, you, people start asking, you know, does really ideas, is idea the everything? You know, probably we need more, right? That's why I think in this year, what we believe is this is, the, this is the year that actual products, actual business values will really come into this, uh, this field. We already started to see Decentraland, you know, they already have their, their product working. You know, they're already showing, you know, many things can be done here. Yeah, so on top of these uh, applications, what will be the next generation of computing system? Well, we think it will be focusing on really fulfill 
different commercial. Okay, to to really have a performance that meets the commercial requirements, you know, because we are now talking about much more, much larger customer base. We're talking about different businesses have, having different requirements. We're talking about a much faster moving pace where things can get fixed much faster. Things get improved. And also we're, talking, we're looking at, you know, so for different chains, probably there will be a communication system that unites them. So that's where ELF wants to be. You know, we want to be the next generation, we want to be on top of a generic computing platform. We want to be the, we want to be the decentralized cloud computing network that fulfills commercial usage. I mean, so what we see here is in the, in the blockchain system right now, there are three main issues. Number one, I think this is um, very common for everyone. So the scalability issue, what does it mean is if you really want to want to want to serve thousands or tens of thousands of customers on a blockchain right now, that's not feasible. That's why people always start to. That, that's also the, the the constraint. You know, some great ideas cannot is not happened has not happened uh, in the field yet. And the second part is about resource segregation. What does it mean? Is right now if you consider blockchain as one lane of roads, all the cars, meaning all the DApps, they are fighting for one lane. So that's very difficult. As a developer, I don't have control of the lane that I'm moving. So for example, we, when we look at CryptoKitty, that is one of the successful use case on Ethereum right now. But it also creates problems for the other DApps because they cannot perform if CryptoKitty is performing. So it, it helps if you segregate the computing resources for different DApps so that they do not interfere with each other. And the third part is about governance. I think there has been many experiments on blockchain in terms of technology, in terms of the ideology, but also more experiments will happen in the future. So how do you make sure that there is a certain way of consensus to ensure the community is united and make decisions when it's needed? Bitcoin has been discussing what is the best solution for scalability for some time, more than one year, right? I, I think it's good you know, for open discussion, but also sometimes it's, it's also important to do experiments, to make mistakes, learn from it. So a certain way of decision-making process will certainly help that. Yeah, so this year we already see, starting from last year, we already see you know, different ideas of how blockchain system would happen in this field. So what I see is I see three scenarios. The first one is we see some of the chains Uh, okay. By having one, so a single chain structure. So they're gonna start to improve themselves, saying that, okay, so I can work on scalability. I can also fulfill different business requirements. I can do everything. I become the ultimate winner that serves all different purposes. So I call that, it's an empire. It becomes an empire that basically do not need help from any other chains, but still you know, become the champion. Okay, so the second thing, uh, scenario is actually different chains, which is what's happening right now. So they all start to work on their different characteristics. So some of them will be more focusing on security, some are privacy, some maybe for scalability. Then on top of that, a protocol that is trying to unite them, that lets them to speak to each other. So that kind, if you consider each of the chain as one kingdom, this becomes the United Nation. So for example, maybe Polkadot is you know, doing that way, right? And what we see here, okay, if we wanna you know, have a more structured way um, for blockchain system, a third option would be that we also adopt a multi-chain structure, but all of them 
actually has the same fundamental architecture behind it, and each of them can, can still reserve certain characteristics for their own, but they are also interlinked across among them. So in this case, you can see each of the chains as one federation, uh, as one state, but all of them are linked and formed one single ecosystem under the same constitution, and that forms a federation. So for ELF, what we're taking is the third, third approach. In our own ecosystem, you know, we allow different chains using our technology, and they can keep certain characteristics of their own. Yeah, another observation here is, if we look at most of the um, blockchain systems right now, they have thousands of nodes. So those are the computers that is across the globe, right? But what ultimately executes all the dApps, the smart contracts, is actually go down to one computer. So imagine you have thousands of computers performing the work, but the performance goes down to one computer. And that limits you know, how complicated the smart contracts can be in that case. That's why for us, one of the, one of the ideas that, bring, uh, that goes into ELF is we bring in the cloud computing capability and architecture into blockchain system. So instead of you know, having, so instead of having all, the, all the transactions being performed by every single computer and one by one, we put them separately into different groups and allow them to be processed uh, in parallel. So what it means is it increases the computational capability. Okay, so in a nutshell, before we go into the details, yeah, so what is ELF? It's, it, it brings three key innovations. So number one is we have a main chain plus side chain architecture. So different dApps will be running on different chains. They do not interfere with each other. So that's how we achieve the resource segregation. It also helps to increase the scalability. And number two is about improving the computational power. So that's where we bring in the, the parallel processing capability so that the whole node system becomes a cloud computer instead of just one computer. And the last part is about having a preset consensus system so that token holders can make decisions on several on-chain on, on governance. So what it means is they can choose, they can vote for what are the capable nodes to perform the work and for technical features, whether those are desirable to be added on to the system. So we wanted the system to be self-evolving and we start to see other there are already some projects already working on that because making sure there's a self-evolving capability is important. Nothing is perfect at the very beginning. Right. Okay, so the first thing is, okay, so how do we achieve resource segregation? Yeah, so on the top you see is basically all the different use cases and dApps running on one blockchain. So this blockchain does token insurance and also performs gaming and insurance and other stuff. So if we go back to the time where Bancor did the ICO, actually the whole blockchain has what is not capable of performing anything else for hours. And also think about CryptoKitty. So if I look from a developer's point of view, actually that's undesirable because I can build really good dApps, but I have no guarantee and control of what's happening if other dApps are also performing well, which is ultimately you know, the, the goal for blockchain. That's why for us, we believe it's better to have one chain to, for one smart, uh, one smart contract. So we could have side chains that is only for information registration and chains that is only for token insurance. So if on ELF, 
there are ICOs or token sales uh, ongoing. That will happen on the digital insurance chain, while the other chains will not be congested. And this also helps you know, to organize the different industries so that they can have their dedicated places and they can share some of, if, if it gets like, really uh, congested, there's also an option of going even one layer deeper so that they can have multi multiple sub-layers. Okay, so, but how do you ensure that you know, what happened on all the side chains will be correctly registered? That's why for, in our architecture, the main chain actually does not process any smart contract, but it acts as an observer. It takes the mercury root of all these side chains so that it becomes a verifier that really get a stamp on what has happened, what other transactions has been done on each side chain. And side chains, they can do their own communication, but every time if they need a verification, they refer to the main chain and they can see, okay, what other transactions really happened over there. And in order to build a multi-chain structure, we actually make the whole chain as a template. So there is a dedicated place where you can put your smart contract in and you can, you can even customize the consensus protocol. Um, so what it means is companies, if they're more comfortable of using their own consensus or using a private chain, they don't need to build the blockchain from scratch. They can use ELF architecture right away, but just need to put the consensus code in there. So for the overall ecosystem of ELF, you're gonna see a lot of side chains that are, which are public and are sharing the same consensus protocol. And some side chains, uh, some private chains, will also be connected with us and they will also be verified by the main chain. Yeah, so what we have done just now is actually if you think from a highway point of view, we have changed from one lane highway to multiple highway, to multi lanes, right? But the other thing here is this needs much more powerful computational power. Yeah, so that's why we don't think, you know, being, transactions being processed one by one is the most efficient way anymore. That's why we have introduced a task scheduler. So what it does is before all the transactions being processed, they will be first scanned and identify what are the independent transactions. We look at the input and output range, making sure that they do not overlap with each other. So easily you can put them into independent groups. After that, the different groups will be fed into different clusters of computers. So they process the transactions in parallel. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so what we're doing here is actually making each of the roads smoother so that transactions can go through much faster. And the, the key challenge here is always how do you do, how do you scan and determine the transactions are independent at the very beginning? And you need to define what are the special cases if you cannot determine uh, their independence in a fast time because you do not want to stop or delay the block formation time. So there's a balance between you know, how, de how refined your groups are and how fast you know, that task can be done. Yeah, so this is an illustration of how we see it. So all the transactions actually share the same P2P layer and storage but when it goes to all the transactions, goes into uh, the nodes, actually that's where the, the grouping happens and they will be done in parallel. The same, the similar idea of uh, AWS or Azure, but in this case, it's decentralized. So that creates the computing platform for all the apps. Yep, and yeah, this is an illustration of 
because we're, we're running a multi-chain. And so you'll see communication that is within the chain and also communication across chains. And only if they need to, ver need to do a verification, they will refer to the main chain. Otherwise, a P2P uh, works in that way. And in order to speak to other chains, we are also doing adapters uh, to some of the most useful blockchains, so including Bitcoin and also Ethereum in that case. Okay, the last part is about the consensus. Yeah, so I, I like to use an analogy here. So I think building uh, any, any product, you know, right now the design thinking is always about fast prototyping. You try your idea, then you fail fast, but also the key thing here is you fail fast, but you also have a way to fix it fast, right? Um, so if you consider this is uh, ELF system, you have the main chain, you have all the different side chains. Some of them may have some technical feature that needs upgrade, right? So here, people vote for it. If there's new technology, people will say, okay, I want it, so we should upgrade some of the chains. So the token holders actually vote for it. But there will be chains that says, uh, you know, I, I'm happy with what I, what I have, and I don't wanna upgrade anymore. But the whole community actually thinks, you know, that's not the best for the society. So they might be voted out. So that's where you see, you know, the breakage that they would get voted out. So that introduced a computation because sometimes you have similar smart contracts that does similar things, but some of them might be more active in terms of upgrading. Yeah, so in a nutshell, uh, so what ELF brings in is number one, the resource segregation by, by having a multi-chain structure. So different smart contracts will be hosted on different chains. And number two, in order to host such a, a more complex system, uh, we introduce cloud computing capability by having task scheduler to group transactions uh, and process them in parallel. And the last part is to give in the on-chain governance to the token holders so that they can vote for um, new tech features and also certain governance um, decisions. Okay, so our plan is actually we're gonna have our first uh, delivery by, by end of April or early March. Yeah, that's where we'll have the asset uh, asset chain, which is one of the chains specializing token issuance. So that'll be ready. And also we will define the template of what each, uh, each chain will look like. What is the placeholder for smart contract and what is the placeholder uh, for consensus protocol. And also we're working on the parallel processing um, part of the chain, uh, of the, uh, the feature. Yeah, so by, by end of Q2, that's where we're gonna launch the test net of ELF, where you can already see multi-chain multi structure together with parallel processing capability. Then governance model will come later on in the next quarter, and by end of this year, that's where we'll launch the main net, and together with a couple of um, D apps that will be running on, on top of that. So it's a very ambitious timeline, uh, but our team has been working on this and we are constantly co committing to uh, GitHub. And the good thing is also a lot of you know, helpers because it's an open source project. So a lot of people are also committing their codes uh, to us. And of course, you know, any new platform does not win just because of the technology. It's important to build an ecosystem an ecosystem needs capital, the commercial applications, and technology. I mean, we're a team that has been cooperating with many guys, so we're definitely watching the different technologies in the system, uh, in, in, the, in, in the industry. And for the commercial part, we already started to talk to different companies, uh, startups and corporate, 
Um, we, one of our advisor, which I'm gonna touch later on, so he is a key tech figure uh, in US. So he helps us to introduce startups and to test out you know, new ideas on ELF. And also we are working with uh, co consulting companies to have the access to large corporates so that we can, we can see what are the most viable business models on blockchain. And on the capital side, um, we already got f investment from many crypto funds. Um, so we are also working with them to fund new projects that are promising and can help us to build up the ecosystem. Yeah, so um, yeah, just a quick introduction. So you are about the team. So you already have seen Hao Bo, which is sitting over there. Um, yeah, so the interesting about him is he entered this field in 2013. And as a busy person as he is, he tried many things. He built up one of the crypto exchanges in China, which is still running as a CTO. He also built up a payment system, which is similar to uh, BitPay uh, in China. Um, and that's why, that's where, you know, so last year I was speaking to him, then we talked about infra how important in infrastructure is, and this whole idea of ELF comes in. Uh, second guy is myself. Um, so I'm an engineer by training, um, but I got into business right after graduation. So I worked in uh, Roland Berger, which is one of the leading consultancy, um, especially in Europe and Asia. Yeah, uh, so I've, I stayed in Southeast Asia uh, for five years. So that's where I worked with uh, governments and large corporates uh, all together. Uh, the interesting here is I start to see how some of the emerging markets are more willing to adopt new technology. Because number one, they don't have a legacy issue. You know, there's nothing. And number two is also they have seen how Korea, how China, how India, you know, by, by leading some certain technology can really become a major player in the market. And yeah, so the other two members are also in the tech team. Yeah, unfortunately, they cannot make it here today. <laughs> this is our uh, advisory board. Um, I guess you guys already met, seen uh, this, this guy, Shoji, so Vincent. So he was the founder of FBG Capital, uh, who was on the stage just now. Yeah, so he has been very, very helpful, you know, imparting his knowledge uh, into us. And, you know, as a fund, they also have a very nice portfolio of different uh, ICO projects. Uh, so that's where we leverage their connections, you know, to get to know Hashed, um, also to speak to different companies to stay, you know, to stay ahead of what's going on in the market. Um, yeah, so Liam is also a, uh, one of the founders in another fund, more focusing in Europe. It's called Alphabet. Um, so Kenneth, Kenneth is the senior, senior partner of Dentons, which is an international law firm. Um, the reason that you know, we need him is because to navigate in such a complex industry, you know, uh, we think we need strong guidance and help on legal stuff. And he's been very helpful and very knowledgeable because he also did Kyber, also did 10 um, That's why we're very happy you know, to have him and leverage his knowledge in that. Um, the last person, uh, Michael Arrington. Uh, I don't know whether you have heard about him. No? Uh, have you heard about TechCrunch? So he's the founder of TechCrunch. Um, yeah, so he's been in this field for a long time, you know, ever since the industry, uh, internet business. Um, so we're very great to have him uh, because, you know, he helps us to increase our presence in US, which is a very important market for us in terms of devs and also in terms of yeah, use cases. Yeah, so I don't know how many of you actually heard about ELF before this. Uh, anyone heard about ELF before? Can, can you raise your hands? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, not that many, um, which is also expected. Uh, the reason was because we didn't do any public sale for our tokens um, for multiple reasons, for regulatory compliance, you know, also as a uh, infrastructure project, you know, we 
want to have a global presence from the very beginning, and also we want to have the long-time investors you know, from, from day one. Because globalization, I think, is also, it's really the key thing about this decentralization. Because every time we talk about crypto, two things, right? It's borderless, meaning that even we don't speak the same language, when we talk about Bitcoin or we talk about other diff technology, all of a sudden people start to talk, and it's 24 seven. That's why for us, the main thing here is really about globalization. Yeah, just to highlight some of the investors we have right now, very happy to have Hashed on board. Uh, I think without them, we cannot make this, uh, we can make this uh, meetup happen. And also, Korea is really an important market for us for multiple reasons. You know, you have really good creative uh, people in this market. Um, also, you know, very willing to accept new things. And, and you know, the growth of uh, the crypto industry in, uh, in Korea is also is, is phenomenal. Yeah, so we love to be here. Um, yeah, from the US side, uh, we have Galaxy, so that's Michael Novogratz, um, which also has been investing in a lot of projects in the past. Um, Block Tower, so that's Ari Poe, also very active um, opinion, key opinion leader on Twitter, and has been in, block, uh, in crypto for a long time. Uh, we also have some of the most dominant uh, funds from Southeast Asia, the Signum Capital, um, yeah, so I think we're, we're happy that we already have a lineup of global investors. So for us, the next step is go global in other aspects. So that means the community. That means the dev, the dev groups, even for our team. So I'm gonna talk about that. So we did our private token sale last December, and that was a very quick one. Um, so it has been one month, and let me share with you what we have done. Yeah, so one, you know, having a private sale has a lot of benefits, but it also has one big issue because none of you have heard about us. So that's a big issue. We want people to know about us, to understand our technology, so that we can build helpers. We can build, you know, community that really helps us on coding, on design, on business development, right? That's why we have doing a catch up game in the past one month. So we have established different channels. Our key channel right now is uh, Telegram and also WeChat group. Um, so within one month, we already have 40,000 members in our English channel. I still remember on the first day uh, when we started to do our channel, uh, it gets to from like 500 to all of a sudden to 2,000. And by then we don't have a community manager team. <laughs> so I was the one that was Christmas Day, actually. Uh, so I have to like reply 24 seven. I, I couldn't sleep, right? Um, but the good thing here is also something like I really see the value of uh, crypto is a lot of volunteers jumped out. You know, people who really like our project, so they start to help each other. They become the moderators in the group. So that's why right now, with 40,000 members, we let the community to manage themselves. And still, we believe that's the best way to do it. And also, for Chinese-speaking channels, we have 20,000 members. Um, right now, we have launched Korean, Japanese, Arabic, and Russian channels all together because you know, we really want to engage different cultures, and we really respect that. Because uh, for myself, I have been uh, studied in different places. So I lived in the US, I lived in Singapore, I was origi originally from China, spent some time in Germany. So I do see the benefits, the value adding, you know, having different uh, values and different views. And I think sometimes the sparks comes out of that clash. Okay. Um, yeah, and also recently we have engaged with a PR agency uh, which is based in New York. Uh, so it's called Waxman. Um, so they have been running successfully for many projects, including like uh, Cardano, um, yeah, so they're very, we're very happy, you know, so we're trying to put all the, place, all the resources in place so that we can grow the community. Um, and it's not just like this, it's not just this, because even for GitHub right now, when we release our codes, there are many helpers that also com commit their codes and helping us. So we see the community as a extended team for, our, for ourselves. 
which also means that you know, we want to engage more with the community. So we have launched a, pro uh, a small project. It's a bounty program. It's called Azeroth, also from uh, Warcraft. Um, so what, what we want to achieve here is really we want to have one, central, one, one place where we can have different tasks that we want the community to accomplish. And to prove the, uh, in order to, you know, to reward the, the work, we also give tokens out. So one interesting finding, uh, we, we see this as an experiment. So this has been running for uh, one week or so. Uh, so you, if you see the color, that's how uh, the distribution of participants um, for our community. Actually, we see it's pretty global, except unfortunately we're not in a green, uh, that's Iceland, I think. Yeah? It's gr Greenland. Greenland, yeah, we're, we're not in Greenland. Um, but pretty much we have a very nice coverage. And within one week, we received you know, over 70,000 users uh, in this program. And that comes from almost 6,000 uh, cities. And we have made this specifically also for Korea. So we have translated the website and we encourage people to try it out. So right now it's more of a social media influence based tasks. You know, reading our Twitter, uh, letting people know about us. Uh, later on we'll have more tasks which will be more focused on, you know, understanding the project or, you know, helping us on certain tasks. I encourage you guys to definitely try it out. Um, yeah, in terms of exchanges, we are already listed on um, uh, quite a few exchanges. Um, in case you guys want, you know, want to check it out, so we are already on uh, Bitfinex and also Binance, um, among other guys. I mean, also I think this is thanks to our um, our preparation for the legal side, so that we can be cleared uh, quite fast. If I get into that, yeah, okay. Yeah, and the last part is, um, yeah, we keep on talking about community, right? And we don't wanna miss out Korea. And just like we do, we want the community to, to, ban to, to help us and also uh, help us to manage the community here. Uh, that's why for, for Korea, we definitely want dedicated persons who help us to run the community and marketing and if there are any devs that are interested in us, you know, uh, besides just uh, help us on GitHub, you can also approach us. You can be part of the team. This is the same plan that we're going to do in Silicon Valley or in Berlin or any other countries, you know, where we see that a strong interest that comes out of it. Um, so it goes back to my, to our goal, you know, we want to be global and we want to be open. And this is only the first step that we're reaching that goal. And I'm very happy to share that with you guys. I think that's, I believe that's all. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. How about this one? I just tried using the Candy IO page. Okay. And it, it requires the uh, invitation code. Give me one. Yeah, uh, right. Um, yeah, we can. Um, the we can talk about it later. I, I can definitely give you that. <laughs> no problem for that. Yeah. But thank you for testing it out. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation today. Uh, I'm sure you've been asked this question multiple, multiple times in the past, ever since you were good. But what do you think uh, actually makes you different from Polkadot? <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think that goes back to the slide when I talk about um, United Nation and Federation, because what Polkadot does is to unite heterogeneous chains, meaning each chain actually. Its own, it's, it's from a different technology and it's from a different community, right? Because uh, Polkadot is basically trying to 
link Ethereum with, uh, let's say, Bitcoin, then also with ELF, with someone else. But each of them actually has a very distinctive community and culture. That's what they're trying to achieve. Yeah, for ELF, what we're doing here is to link homogeneous chains. Because every chain is actually using the same ELF kernel, the, the same template. Yeah, so they're not that much different. They start from the same base, then we allow customization on top of that. But you know, the roots are still the same. And uh, also for ELF, the, the biggest uh, innovation is actually not the uh, cross-chain communication. It's more about how to making sure the cloud computing feature really works. Because that's not something that we have seen in the market yet. That's where we need to do the uh, task scheduler right and ensure the efficiency and security. Yeah, so I hope that answered your question. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so thank you for the presentation. Yeah. And I have a question about uh, how does the task scheduler work? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, is the task scheduler going to work on one computer and then distribute the Schedule or is it distributed as itself? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, Bitcoin and uh, it's um, all the transaction was uh, execution side by side. Uh, but uh, in our system, uh, we uh, we have a uh, uh, metadata for every transaction. You can uh, when when A transfer money to B and uh, C transfer money. Transfer money to D. The two uh, transaction was uh, not 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 uh, influenced to each other, so we can distribute these transactions into two machines and to to, to increase the performance. And uh, uh, you know, uh, Bitcoin and uh, and uh, Ethereum was run on every computer uh, PC. Uh, every PC can run the its own its, its own client. So the the question is, its own C is a world computer, but uh, the performance is only one PC because your PC can run the its own client. But in our comp uh, in our opinion, uh, if we consider a blockchain system as a database, only the mining pool ha has a right to write the data. And the mining pool is not only one computer now. Uh, so, uh, so we make our system uh, the consistent uh, D DPoS. And uh, the DPoS node can run on clusters. So the performance uh, can be uh, increased by uh, adding uh, machines to the uh, class nodes and let like uh, a cloud computing. Uh, for example, when when we use YouTube or when we use uh, Facebook, uh, uh, there is on, only one website, but behind it, it has a database, it has a, a queue, and it has a, a back, background jobs. And uh, I, I hope our system can can do like this. That's all. Thank you. Questions, gentlemen? You have a question, right? Frankly speaking, I have an idea about what is ELF, but one of my friends mm -hmm. had a great interest in your coin, ELF. Mm -hmm. So, is it over him? I just ask. Okay. Sorry, is it over him? I just ask. Okay, okay sure. Uh, how about the current Chinese government's regulation toward your movement and development or procedure? That's first. Mm -hmm. Second is, what is ELF's main advantages? compared to the former, the combination of Polkadot and Jellica. You okay. understand what's, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so for the first one, um, I think every country, not just China, everyone is very protective of their investors. I think that's what needs to be done. Also US today just had the same uh, hearing and meeting today. Um, but I think the takeaway here is always about protections, regulations uh, has to be in place 
um, to, pro to ensure that uh, the financing is correct. I think 100% okay. Um, but all the countries are actually also saying that blockchain has its potential in the future. So it all goes down to the fundamental technology, um, which is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to prove here. So for us, by working on the, tech, the technical platform, I don't see any issues uh, with the government, uh, which actually is being promoted by many countries right now, right? I think US today, I haven't read the news, but what I heard is uh, the government is also basically saying, do not harm this emerging technology. So, yeah, um, I hope that answers your question. So the other part, yes. So combining Polkadot plus Zilliqa, right. or, or combining Polkadot of US, maybe? <laughs> Um, it will make it very similar to ELF in that case. Yeah, but it's not there yet. So we're trying to be the first one to introduce that. That's one thing just from a architecture point of view. You know, having high performance chain, but multiple ones talking to each other. And the key, but the, but the other innovation is the cloud computing capability that we talked about just now having the capability to execute transactions in parallel. Uh, so that's something that has, we have not seen yet. So I think that will be the key differentiator between us and the other chains. Thanks. Yep. Thank you very much for your okay. Yeah, just one last sentence, sorry. Uh, so back to Decentraland, uh, you know, so also for us, for Decentraland, I think we're all very open, you know, to work across the industry because the industry started very small, but now we're getting more and more interesting people. That's why transparency, openness, collaboration also always plays a part. That's why at the very beginning when, uh, when Decentraland started the auction of the lands, we actually worked together uh, to launch a crypto valley. So it's a virtual place for the different ICO projects or crypto projects, you know, to have their presence. Uh, and we're quite pleased, you know, to see actually a lot of projects have uh, take part in that. Yeah. yeah. So just want to, you know, share this so that um, you guys can check it out. All right. Okay. Thank you.